Hello, it's Morgan from Wild West Garage. So I'm going to be doing some more work on this truck here. It's a 1946 Ford F1. And if you're just tuning in for the first time, uh, I've posted a couple of videos on this truck uh, with regards to the uh, disc brake conversion that was installed on it. Uh, I didn't restore this truck. It came to me this way. It's a beautifully restored truck but it uh, has, a, has a couple of issues, or had a couple of issues, uh, with the uh, disc brake conversion. So if you're thinking about doing a disc brake conversion, or if, you want, or if you just, you're just curious what I did to this truck and how I fixed the issues with it, you can go and check out uh, the video I posted on that. And uh, it might be helpful to somebody that's shopping for some parts or just want to make it yourself. I ended up making a, a caliper bracket for this truck myself. Um, so that really worked out well. So you might want to check that out. So, but anyways, uh, so today the, uh, the job that we're going to be doing is the uh, uh, turn signal conversion. And um, like most vehicles of this area, this truck didn't come with turn signals from the factory. It wasn't until the mid 50s when they started building cars like the 57 Chevy and I think the 53s had factory uh, turn signals as well. So a lot of cars were uh, being equipped with uh, turn signals as standard in the early 50s. Uh, maybe not so much even pickup trucks, I don't know, but uh, I think Buick was one of the first manufacturers to start putting turn signals on their cars as a standard feature. But anyways, uh, that's enough about the history of turn signals. We're here to, we're here to learn how to upgrade your pre-50s vehicle. And this, what I'm going to do to this truck will apply to just about any, any pre-50s ve uh, vehicle or any vehicle that doesn't have turn signals. This uh, light here is strictly a marker light. Uh, it only has one filament, so I'm sure you can buy aftermarket uh, sockets or uh, housings that will take two filaments, but uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to modify these. Uh, anyways, I'm going to show you how, I'm gonna, uh, how I do that. I'm going to show you how I installed the uh, turn signal lever on the column, and I'm going to show you how I wire it up to make it all work. So uh, let's, get, let's get to work. So here are the parts that I'm going to be using. And this is a truck light brand switch. It looks, you know, looks very period correct for this truck. I don't think they've changed these in, since they started making them. So this truck came to me with this plastic knobby thing here installed on the column and it's to me it just really looks out of place what's interesting is this has a different uh, color code most of the wires are the same color except this has a white wire and it has a black wire with a white stripe and the truck light switch it has a black wire, but it doesn't have a white stripe, and it doesn't have the white wire, and I don't know which one's substituted for the, the white wire, but so I, the, in the glove box, this, these instructions were there. This didn't come with instructions, so I went on the internet, and I, uh, I'm going to show you a picture that I found. It's a truck light in, in installation manual or two page spread of, uh, of uh, instructions, but it shows you what colors, what these, where these colored wires go to, but it doesn't really show you how to connect it or what you need to do to, to make this work. So uh, I'm, I'm gonna figure that out and I'll show you what I did. So I forgot about this part. Um, this is the flasher relay. Of course, this truck won't have a flasher relay in it because it doesn't have anything that flashes. So I've gone ahead and marked this 
connector to correspond to my list of uh, wires coming out of the switch. So the L, as you can see, flasher L is yellow, so that's there. You can see you can see that L on the flasher unit itself, and then P, which is right there, flasher P, blue. So I marked that blue on the side, and then X. There's an X there on the flasher unit itself. Is it hooks the power? So I'm going to hook. I'm going to hook that black wire right there to the powered side of the brake light switch. And what I mean by the powered side is is the side of the switch that's always hot. So I guess it's connected to the battery in, in some way. So either through the uh, directly from the battery or through the ignition switch. And I think it's in most cases brake light switches are directly are powered all the time even if the ignition's off. At least they used to be. So there'll be a, a switch. I'll call this the brake light switch. So from here I'm going to hook this to that X terminal. This guy right here. So I'm going to make a little mark right there. It's going to be X. And then this side so right now, this lead here goes to the back of the truck, and then there's two, and I'm just going to leave a little gap here, so then there's two lights, right, two filaments, I'll make a little ground symbol here, and there's another filament. And we'll make a ground, another ground symbol. So, so right now, this is connected. So we've got one wire coming from the brake light switch to the back of the truck. And this is connected here. But what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to actually, I'm going to actually cut this. This wire is going to be cut here, right? And that's going to go to, so then I'm going to take this wire, splice in a wire, and that's going to go to, what did it say? Brake. Can you remount? No, stop switch. It's going to go to the gray with the black wire on the switch. Gray, so I'm going to write gray, black, gray with the black stripe. And then this wire, I'm going to connect it to, so let's say this is the uh, right rear, this is the right and this is the left. So let's go back to my list left rear no, I want right rear right rear right rear there it is probably found it before I did it's black so right rear so this wire that runs to the back of the truck is going to connect to the black on the switch and then I'm going to have to find where this, these two wires are spliced together here. One goes to the right, one goes to the left. So there's a splice somewhere back at the back of the truck. I'm assuming. I'm assuming there's only one wire going to the back of the truck. Because that's all I would need it, right? So I'm going to disconnect this, the left wire from the splice. And then I'm going to run another wire into the cab to the switch. And I'm going to connect that to the left rear which is gray gray and then I'll have to run two new wires from the switch 
I'm not going to get into the color coding right now, to each individual light once I modify it, get those modified. All right, so here's the wiring diagram I was talking about. So it doesn't really show the whole picture, it doesn't tell you what's going on with that stop switch and that line running between the uh, two tail lights is a little bit confusing. So the first thing I did to this switch to get it ready to install in the vehicle was I don't know if you noticed, but all these wires, there's quite a length of these wires that was exposed. And so this has to run down the steering column, so I don't want to be, I don't want to see all these wires running down the steering column. So I had a piece of this uh, shrink tubing, which wasn't quite big enough to go over top of this uh, sheathing here. So what I did was I, I've got this wide tape and I put a few wraps around here and then I kept and I started wrapping it down the wires that made it easier to get through this and then uh, I've gone ahead and shrunk this down so this won't come on frayed here because there's no there's no end there's no loose end so that's all the loose end went down inside here to about there I guess and then so now this will look nice uh, along the, the I'll just uh, zip tie it to the steering column and you won't be able to see all those wires when, as soon as, because this is going to be on the door side so as soon as you open the door you'd be, you would have been able to see all these uh, colored wires and I think that would look really bad. So now I've got this all ready to install in the truck, got my flasher relay wired up. Got all the uh, loose ends taken care of here with some crimp connectors. And so I don't know if you notice this black stuff on the... So this is these are shrink, shrink connectors. I'm not going to get into a whole bunch of detail on these, but I like to use these because uh, you crimp it, you shrink it, it glues the wires together. Less chance of it coming apart. So there's two, two, two... Uh, methods of holding the wire together, the shrink and the crimp. So you can see how, because of the tool I'm using, see that shiny spot there? It's actually cut through the uh, insulation. So when you shrink it, it actually opens up more. So I've only shrunk these on one side, of course, and wired to the wire. But these ones here, so what I did was I took uh, some black, uh, liquid black tape and just kind of went around it to Hold it, hold it on there, but you might you might get away with just dabbing it in the in the hole. But I just thought it would be better to go right around. So, anyways, this is all ready to to go in. Like I said, so I'll get to that now. I've got to figure out how this, this hardware works, and uh, I'll be back. I'm just getting started on this clamp for the switch. So, you see what I did here. I looped it from the outside through the bracket or hook or whatever you want to call this and then it goes inside to the inside so this is the side that's going to be up against the steering column so then I hook this on here and then held it up against the steering column, so the steering column is in here. And then wrapped it around the steering column until it was about the same distance away as this one is and made a mark there, see that? So now I'm gonna do the same thing on, the, on where the mark is and hopefully that's going to clamp on nicely. Um, there's enough material left here, I think. If I screw up, I can get another shot at it, so I think it'll be good, though. So that's what it should look like when you're done. So I just stuck it through there, folded it with my fingers, 
and then I just I squeezed it in the vise to get it to flatten out. So I think the easiest way to do this is just to um, start these screws in here like this with the I don't know what you want to call these things the fancy washers. <laughs> Not really washers, but and then hook one of them in, bring it around, and then there, see now you got both of them in the saddle, and then uh, tighten up the screws. I tried having one in on one side and then trying to put this thing together with the screw and trying to thread it into the inside the, the, the switch but it was just not happening that I thought, well, I'll try this method. And this is my first attempt at it and it's working. I'm just gonna clock this up to where I want it now. I'm gonna clock it at about just shy of 10 o'clock here. I think that's a good place for it. Hopefully my clamp isn't too long. I think it might be. I'm bottomed out on the top now. It's still not really tight. I don't know how much sure, but quite a bit to go on the bottom one. Probably could have been a little shorter. bottomed out now and it still wants to rotate on the column so I'm gonna have to shorten my clamp yeah now it's really spinning okay fail so I shortened that strap I just straightened it out flattened it out and then rebent it about three-eighths of an inch further this way and now it's on there nice and tight there's still some threads left on both sides still was able to use the same method of mounting it or getting it all together it was a little difficult getting these cross pieces over the hook but it uh, went it wasn't too short so anyways um, I think Probably the way to do this would be to just put these um, pieces all together, run the screws down, you know, within a quarter of an inch of bottoming it out, and then measure, if you can hold this tight against here, and then measure around, you can get a better idea of how much uh, strap you need. So anyways, that's... That looks good. It's on there. It's, it's good and solid. So moving on to the wiring. A couple more things I got to do before I uh, start the wiring is I got to modify these these uh, light housings here. And I don't know where the stuff's made, but or how old it is. I don't think it's that old. This truck hasn't been around for that long. Look at this junk. This, I would assume this was brand new when it was you know, installed on the truck. But it's just, this rubber boot is just rotten junk. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these sockets out of here and then I'm going to make the hole big enough so that those clips can go into the, to the hole. And then I'm just going to I'm just going to tack those on. Actually, that looks about the same size as this. Yeah, it would be. So I just I have to slide it in from the inside and I can just tack it. Yeah, because I want it to stick inside. 
as much as that one is, so. Right. Okay, so that's what, that's what we're doing here. So this socket, which is the one that was in here, is just a press fit. So I just, I just smacked it a couple times with my hammer and uh, came out. So now I'm just wondering if this other one, get this one propped up here, will just go in there the same way. There's a press fit. I mean, it's not going in my, my fingers, but I think I can figure out a way to get it in there. So I found a socket that fits nicely inside of here. Now, maybe I can push this in here. It's going to require some force. So I need to find a piece of pipe that fits over this. And then I can smash this in here. Okay, I found a socket that fits over that. I've already got myself into some trouble here because it's not coming out now. There we go. It's going in there. It just needs a bit more. I think. Not much though. The other one was much, actually it's not going to be able to go in, I don't think the other one was any further than that. Let's see, this is the bulb I want to put in. Yeah, I don't want it in much further than that, you won't be able to get the bulb in very easily. Um, it goes in that way. I don't even think I want it in that far. It's just too too difficult. You can't can't hold on to the bulb. So I'm gonna see if I can knock it back out a bit. There, so I'll put the put the guts back in it and see how it works. I don't know how that. Maybe it's all it locates that. It's really good. <laughs> so. Not a real easy. Thing to do here. Not exactly high quality parts. <laughs> the bulb doesn't want to. Go in there. Doesn't want to. You know how you got to turn it. I can't get it to turn. That's going to be fun when you go to change the bulb when it's all stuck in there. Junk. There we go. What's that? Okay, 
it's in there. Get a little grease on it as well. That's better. Put a little lube it on it. Okay, so that's that's that. Modified. Now I can put it back in the truck. I'm gonna solder on a length of wire here first, long enough to get inside the cab. Actually long enough, just long enough to get inside the uh, engine compartment because there's a there's a connector there for the old the old um, the old wire which I've already cut. So I'll weld the original wire <coughs> onto one of these. So I want to so the original marker light I want to solder to the dimmer of the two filaments. So one's 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 the the brighter ones for the for the turn signal. So that's the one I want going to the turn signal switch. Any connections I make outside of the cab of the truck are going to be soldered and shrink wrapped. Just feeling for where that solder joint is. Make sure I get it centered. Yeah, it's pretty good. Boom. Some high quality production here, boys. And girls. It wasn't quite centered, but it's overlapping now. It's good. It's magic. So here's the finished product. I managed to get another wire through the sheathing. It went in there pretty, pretty easy, I guess. And then that rotten boot that was on there. I just put a bunch of wraps of uh, black tape around it, like just a standard black tape. And then I finished it off with a couple of wraps of this wide stuff. And then the part where um, there's nothing underneath it to back it up, I just coated it with this liquid black tape. So hopefully that will keep it from getting wet inside. I think it will. Might put another coat on. So uh, that's the first one. Got one more to do. There's the second one. I probably couldn't tell from the high speed because it's high speed, but I had a lot of trouble getting these two wires through the, uh, the sheathing. Just didn't want to, actually this, the first one, this one went through no problem and easy all the way. Uh, but the second one, for some reason, this was getting hung up in the, in the tube and I could get this wire out. So I ended up just uh, pulling it out part way just so this was sticking out a tiny little bit. And then I taped the two wires together down here where they were coming out of the end of this. And I managed to get it pulled through. So anyway, now I'm ready to, well, as soon as this black tape goop dries, I'll install these back in the truck and then I'll be able to make the connections. I gotta put a connector on here. I'm gonna put a, like a connector like this, a butt connector on here as well and uh, yeah so then we'll be ready to wire I mean this is part of the wiring but be ready to want, run wires in the truck so as nice as this turned out you know, as far as putting this tape on here and putting that liquid tape on you know it really looks good like it was gonna seal up this won't go through the hole in the fender now. 
So I guess, <laughs> yeah, even that rubber boot has to be off of, off of the housing to get through the hole, and then you push this, push this on after. So I've gone ahead and untaped all this. It's just a rotten mess. So I'm gonna try and uh, just, I'm gonna mask off underneath here. And then I'm gonna try putting some of that liquid stuff over top of this and hopefully I can get it off. Junk. All right, got turn signals. Flashy light on there for right turn, left turn. Look, tail lights. It's, it's brighter than the right one. I think the left tail light is an original. So the lens is a little, not quite as red. And then the uh, right side has an aftermarket with a redder, like I said deeper, like it's less translucent. Anyways, I messed around with it, couldn't make it do anything different, so that might be a bulb, but it wasn't a bulb. So, um, just get a light here and you can have a look on this dash installation. So there we go, got it all tied up. Got a fuse right there. There's the flasher, of course. It's tied up to the original wiring harness here. Um, and I tapped into a terminal up there on that block. And it looks like all those wires that came off there go to the light switch. So I tapped into the lighting circuit. Um, so I ended up. I'll just show you quickly show you the how the wires run down the column. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but so it's pretty pretty tidy. This runs down here, up and under the dash. I got a big tie wrap there holding it to the column. Um, so I changed a couple things from my original plan. I was going to tap in uh, uh, here. I was going to tap in for power on the uh, brake pedal circuit um, to the X terminal on the flasher, but it was just easier. The power was right handy there, so it was just easier to connect that power there. And then um, <clears throat> because of the color coding, how it worked out. So this, this, uh, so originally I was going to, I was going to. Um, um, tap in, I think I said I was going to run, uh, I was going to use the original wire running to the back of the truck for the right hand tail light, but I ended up using it for the left hand. So this, so it's, say, it's the same color coding. I just, I just, instead of tapping the black wire in up here, I tapped it in, or I ran it all the way to the back and over to here. And there was a plug in there. I just disconnected the, uh, the brake light filament lead and connected directly to that and then so that by unplugging that it separated these two uh, filaments or two, two circuits and then uh, so so I just un un undid the um, this, this line wasn't gray but it was kind of off white which was closer to to gray than black would have been so um so that worked out so there's a gray wire coming down here and i just spliced in so that runs back here to the left turn signal so basically the same circuit just i just did it a little differently than i originally was going to or had planned to so that's 
that's that's about it that's all i can say it uh it's pretty easy it's just time consuming and uh you know it's it is what it is it takes time so i'm gonna wrap it up here and the fellow that owns this truck is gonna come and take it away there's more work to do but we're gonna defer that to probably in the springtime you can uh, there's a you gotta adjust the hood or try to adjust the hood um, so anyways this truck will be back but for now that's it so thanks again for for watching take care and see you next time